You all hear me? <laughs> I'm pretty loud. My children are in uh, um, theater, so <laughs> they uh, learn to project from me. Anyway, um, I want to thank the morning speakers. Uh, and I'm sort of here to sort of tie things up. I was asked to give a talk on the data management plan, data management uh, planning, and pulling it all together. So those of you who are in data management, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. I think we're all realizing that. There's my disclaimer. And again, I'm going to describe the data management plan, give examples, and recognize, hope, that, hope that you can recognize what is needed to carry out a successful data management plan. So you say, why do we need one? OK, you know, it's pretty simple. You have a subject with confidential data. They give it to the investigator who gives it to the sponsor. You know, it sounds simple. In reality, we know what this is all really about and why there are so many issues. But I'm from the FDA, and the spoiler alert is that we don't talk about data management plan in the Code of Federal Regulations. So I'm getting on my little soapbox here, and the fact that if you follow uh, just our regulations, um, I can't, I can't uh, uh, say for sure that at the end of the day, your data is going to be of necessarily high quality. Because again, our regulations can't keep up with what's going on with the technology. So we do have our part 11. We talk about electronic records, electronic signatures, and handwritten signatures into electronic records. But again, we have a lot of guidance documents. There's ICHE 6, which of course is the law for a lot of the European countries and other countries. So these are other things that you really should be using to supplement what is in our regulations. Because again, those are the minimal requirements. So again, we're talking about best practices. So please don't say, it's not the regulations. I don't need to do it. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have that good data, your, your product's not going to be approved. So now, we do have data management plan mentioned in one of our guidances, at least one. And that's our guidance on electronic source data in clinical investigations. So if you go there, what you're going to see is we start talking about um, case report forms. And we actually do encourage, and it says in our guidance document, that you should have some prompts and flags and quality checks to uh, uh, address any sort of data inconsistencies, missing data, et cetera. And uh, we say the sponsor should describe this, such as in a data management plan. So again, we do mention it there. We talk about um, uh, folks looking at the data and uh, uh, um, who should be authorizing. And again, we say the sponsor should have a list of the individuals that have access to the electronic case report form. And we also mentioned, again, when we're talking about the investigator signing their case report forms, looking at the data, et cetera, the data that is exempt from review. Again, your blinded data should be listed in uh, a data management plan. So again, we are mentioning it, but it's not in our regulation. So those of you who want to do all this without one, Good luck, you know, so. <laughs> but, you know, if you, have a, I'm saying if you have a small phase one study, you know, you're an individual investigator, again, you know, uh, you may not need one as involved as a sponsor with a, you know, 10,000 patient multinational trial. So again, you know, um, I'm just telling you. Anyway, so what is a data management plan? It's a roadmap. Again, we want reliable, high quality data, but again, it makes it, you're getting it more efficiently and more effectively. So again, I highly advise that you have one. And again, it's a living document. So it's not something you're going to write and put to the side. So that document should include who's going to be writing it, who's going to be reviewing it, who's going to be approving it, who's going to be finalizing it. That should be part of that. Um, how uh, will the modifications be made if needed during the project? And I'm telling you, it will happen. And again, this is one document, it should link to the many SOPs, and there should be many that are associated with your data management plan. Again, this never stands alone. So what are you trying to piece together? Again, this is kind of grouping a lot of what the talks were this morning. Again, your case report form designing. That should be uh, mentioned in your data management plan. Data entry. Again, um, there should be a tracking system to also make sure that all your case report forms you have that are required. And please, I just want to do a little plug here. Don't have sites do calculations in order to enter their data. Um, again, there are a lot of errors noted. So you know, you sponsors out there, uh, please try to refrain from doing that. Anyway, um, you should have what's involved as far as your data extraction regarding like devices or, again, the electronic health records, which are 
more and more being pulled into these clinical trials. And again, and they weren't meant for clinical research, so you've got to understand that. And again, data validation. Um, again, uh, you need to have often a separate data validation plan, and when we go on inspections, we often do ask for that. So this is to give you a little heads up. Got to pull together the external data, again, all the labs from off-site, the imaging, quality assurance and quality control, discussing the audits, discussing the monitoring, again, um, checking. I just want to throw in here, also talk about stressing your system. I can't tell you how much uh, errors are found, so I would definitely make a plan for stressing your system to make sure it's working the way it's supposed to. Again, how to deal with discrepancy management. There will be discrepancies you're not going to be able to resolve at the end of the day. And again, you have your separate discrepancy <laughs> list, but again, how are you going to deal with discrepancies? Again, how are reports going to be generated? What reports? Your standard reports? You're looking at a quality system, so you should hopefully be generating reports that's also looking at how the trial's going and if there's any issues that are developing. Again, your customized programs and reports you may want out. Again, medical coding, adverse events, your medications. A lot of folks use Medra, but in your data management plan also, there's different versions. So be sure you mention what version everybody's going to be using. And then reconciliation of your safety database. Folks often have a separate safety database from their electronic uh, um, uh, CTM. Uh, but part of this is, again, there's also your medical monitor discussing cases with the sites. Are you reconciling what they know with what's in your adverse event case report form? So again, there's those communications where you want to make sure you're capturing all your safety data. And more pieces, again, the data security. Again, we talk about the restricted access, data backup, et cetera. And it's not just during the trial, but then your final um, uh, data for uh, maybe a certified copy. So the database locking is a big one. As uh, Andy Fisher mentioned, um, your list of what needs to be done before your database gets locked. They talk about soft locks versus hard locks. You really should describe what you mean by that in your data management plan. Again, who has uh, access privileges. Database unlocking really should only be for critical issues. And again, that should be described and when you may want to unlock it. Um, we did have one case where there were like 36 SAEs discovered after database lock. I won't get into why the sponsor didn't notice it before. But the point being, those are such things that we would, would want you to unlock your database. But again, it should be in a very systematic manner. And uh, again, data export um, uh, for maybe your uh, uh, reports to DSMB for uh, sharing. And then that data archiving, which as Andy mentioned, is really big. So there's a lot of stuff. So take a deep breath. How do you begin? OK. So you're going to review your protocol and your um, project. OK. Now, uh, I do have some references at the end for all those who have copies of my slides. And there are some templates. It's, they're not easy to find, but I would suggest that every company have a template, data managing plan template. However, there, there should be one per study. So basically, you're only going to have one per study. But having a template is fine, and I would highly recommend it if you're, if you're new to all this. Read a lot of data management plans. Look at these templates. You can kind of see what needs to be involved in the data management plan. Again, hire a knowledgeable team. Sometimes it's easier said than done. But um, I also say, really, um, decide who's going to be responsible for what. I mean, we had an um, a answer to an issue from a sponsor where basically there were two separate groups responsible for the same procedure. Well, guess what? There were problems. So you really do need who is that final responsible person that's going to be you know, in charge of whatever. So I'll tell you, it, there's problems when, when that is really not spelled out. And again, we all know we need a good support system, especially with these international trials. There's constant. It's got to be 24-7. Are you really going to have issues with your data? And then training. Um, a lot of sponsors do require that in order for the site to be involved with their system. They have to have training before they can be logged on, et cetera. So it's at the site. It's with the uh, contract research organization, and it's with the sponsor staff. So you step back and you say, how will the data be created? OK, are you doing questionnaires? Are you doing um, 
uh, imaging? Are there some experimental measurements? Again, looking at that protocol, how and in what format will the data be captured? Again, Excel spreadsheets, we know there can be some issues, but you got a small phase one trial, one investigator, they are used a lot. So again, is it going to be paper case report forms, electronic case report forms, a hybrid with these international trials, you often will have paper and electronic. Again, think about the internet going down. I'm living in North Carolina now. We did not have internet for two weeks where I live, so it still happens. It's not just in third world countries. So again, your backup system for all that and how your data is being captured. And again, your standard data transfer specifications for that non-case report form data that Andy had mentioned. So you're going to say how much data will be collected, how often, how long. Again, you're looking at is it a very short trial? Because some folks say how often should I do my cleaning, especially like your safety data. How often should I look at it? You've got a small trial, may not be you know just right before database block. You've got a long trial, and we've seen these uh, cardiovascular outcome trials that last years. You know, some of these years, you're going to want to be doing that very often on a monthly basis. So again, I can't stress enough um, uh, as far as determining what you need to do by how long your project's going to be. And um, anyway, the metadata, which we talked about before, how will it be created, captured? Again, your subject ID, instrument ID. Are you using standards like the CDISC? Um, metadata standards. Again, highly recommend we do that. You um, use the standards that are developed out there by these nonprofit organizations. How will folders and files be named and organized? Again, some folks will actually have a file with very restricted access where there's unblinded data there. They'll actually have something with a file name so that if folks see it, they'll know not to click into it. Although I will give a story where one uh, sponsor staff periodically did that. I don't know what she did, but um, just to see if she could get into these restricted folders. And guess what? She did. <laughs> and then, you know, in a way that is sort of stressing your system. Not the only problem with that is she proceeded to tell somebody else who went in there, and these people were involved with the trial, and suddenly there's folks getting into a file that has unblinded data. So again, um, that is also part of your data management plan. What happens when something like that happens? I mean, think of that. I mean, I look at data management plans, and what I find interesting is the version control, and when it's changed, why was it changed? Well, it'll say that they didn't have anything regarding accidental unblinding if someone gets into a folder, or uh, data security that it's been breached. So again, these are things you have to um, think about. But um, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting that she happened to click into there. Anyway, um, how will everyone understand your data? Again, you do need your uh, data dictionaries, your code books, what are you going to be using? Uh, what will be the data validation process? Folks think about, think about the sponsor's C, uh, um, your CRO, but also even at the investigator site. Well, what will be your data validation process? How will the data be stored? Again, there's a lot of different ways. And again, technology changes. So you want to make sure as far as it doesn't need to be uh, in a um, a certain file format so that for long-term storage. Again, you know what our record retention is, but certain countries like Canada want 25 years. So think of that, again, the floppy disk story. So again, how will your data be secured? Again, how will your data be shared? And again, with clinicaltrials.gov, you're going to be sharing your data with folks. So you got to know how to prepare it. Um, uh, transferring again to the investigators, as Andy mentioned, we've had issues with that of exactly what has been transferred. Are there any ethical privacy issues? We do know the Europeans and, and us we were a little different as far as the, some of the privacy issues. You need to know that if you're in a multinational uh, trial. And again, what are your quality assurance, quality control mechanisms at each stage of data handling? Again, it's very important to be doing the data cleaning along, on, along the way I've seen trials where they did it at the end, and it was a mess. So I would not advise that. So with your data management plan, what else do you want? Again, have a list of all the roles and responsibilities with people's contact information. Again, very important. Include a communication plan with your, with your data management plan. Include a data flow uh, um, diagram. Again, it's very helpful for, for those who are using your data management plan. And document deviations from your plan. So what pitfalls have we seen? And we've seen many, as, as Andy had mentioned. Again, the case report form design, 
One recently with a pretty big sponsor where they literally missed an inclusion criteria on their case report form. Again, that um, it does still happen. Um, also, uh, I'm a big one on beta testing. And for those of you who are involved with case report form design, uh, I was in a um, previous year at the NIH. We did protocol training. And um, they had certain scenarios of cases that would probably, you know, good potential they come up in the trial. And, and here I was a medical monitor, and they had us filling out the case report form based on this case. I had a hard time filling them out. So I'm thinking, you know, I, as a medical monitor, if I was having a hard time filling out what to put from that case into this case report form, you can imagine what the site personnel, the trouble they would be having. So again, it's not only developing your case report form, but again, maybe doing some type of beta testing like that, where you can see, does it make sense? Is it going to be easy to fill out this case report form? Again, another thing is not addressing the missing data. It's a big problem, especially when these applications come in. So again, you got to address not, not only the missing case report form, but the data within the case report form, et cetera, so, not, so the statisticians aren't dealing with that at the end. Again, not involving appropriate staff. Again, as someone mentioned before, you need your clinical operations people involved, your data management people, your safety people involved. A little plug for the sites. They complain a lot about data queries on, on safety, but people who don't understand safety. Again, you're wasting a lot of their time, so it would be very beneficial that someone who has a clinical background is involved in those queries so it doesn't waste their time. Again, some uh, external data loading errors, sort of as Andy had mentioned. A lot of it is due to input errors. And again, site monitoring issues. Again, you can have the fanciest case report form, the best protocol written, if you have sites that can't do it, it, it doesn't make any difference. So if you have sites that are sloppy, that don't understand, if you have uh, um, inappropriate monitoring, again, we talk about risk-based monitoring. Again, I'm on my soapbox here. But again, risk-based monitoring doesn't mean no monitoring or just less monitoring. It just means more intelligent monitoring. So if you look at our guidance document, we talk about up front, you need investigators who are well trained. Again, you need risk based monitoring, and that if you've got a new investigator, you're going to go there more compared to one maybe less. That you look at past monitoring visits to determine if you need to monitor more or less. So, again, risk based monitoring doesn't just mean less monitoring. So, again, the takeaway message for this is your data management plan is a living document. Understanding good management practices before you begin. Evolve all appropriate staff in the writing and the review of your plan as it is created. And be prepared for changes because they will happen. So now, so that you all get um, your CMEs or whatever. OK, let's see. <laughs> should, should a company strive to use the same data management plan for all studies? Yes or no? No. Very good. No. You want a template, I highly advise that. Less chance you're going to be missing certain issues when you write it up. But no, it's, it's specific for each study. OK, your data management plan should include which of the following? All data exempt from review, all of the individuals with authorized access to your case report form, C, links to SOPs in place governing its use and modifications, so D is B and C, and E is all of the above. So who's for A? Who's for B? Who's for C? Who's for D? Very good. Who's for all of the above? It's even better. Right, the answer is all of the above. So again, I have a lot of resources in my slides. Um, um, I also uh, asked that they put uh, the Drug Information Association put out, I would say, a very nice article on SOP on writing your data management plan. So you know, it's SOPs on SOPs. So, um, but I did ask that that be part of your references, and I think it's a, a very um, a good resource that if you will be writing a data management plan to look at their SOP on writing a data management plan. I think that would be helpful for you. Anyway, so there I am. Thank you very much. And I was told, I tried to go fast here, um, we're going to delay the panel um, questioning for this afternoon so you can have lunch. That is That's correct. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. first of all, thank you, Cynthia. For